Hello and welcome to Teachings and Education, the 14 categories of students with disabilities for classroom educators, teachers, and others. In this video, all 14 categories will be defined, explored on the basis of its characteristics, and offer various teaching strategies specific to that category of disability. Now, we'll begin with the first category on the list, intellectual disability. Intellectual disabilities can be defined as significantly below average general intelligence existing with deficits in adaptive behavior. Children with this disability have an IQ below 70. They also have difficulties in comprehension and life functions. These children may have difficulties with simple tasks such as washing their hands. When teaching these students, use concrete examples, have patience, and break down the material. These children are sweet and loving. Use manipulatives and engaging resources for these children. They really want to learn. Next up, this refers to a child with both hearing and visual disabilities evident before age three. These children often have a genetic condition called Usher syndrome, which affects a child at birth. The major symptoms of Usher syndrome are hearing loss. The teacher should use large print textbooks, braille, sign language, and tactile learning. There is a great variety of large print books available, and some educators have taken up learning sign language. Now, next up, specific learning disability. Specific learning disability can be defined as a disorder in basic psychological processes and the imperfect ability to think, speak, read, write, and do math. Students have difficulties with specific academic skill sets like math, reading, writing, etc. Students may struggle processing information in one subject or skill set as opposed to another skill set. Teachers should carefully read the IEP to identify the best accommodations for these students. Teachers should really study a student's strengths and weaknesses which are found in their IEP. Fourth on the board, deafness. It is defined as an inability to comprehend verbal language due to a lack of hearing ability characterized by deafness. These children have a hearing loss in pitch and loudness greater than 90 decibels. These students are unable to fully hear even with amplification, meaning even hearing aids do not really help. Teachers should support students with text-to-speech technology and provide a classroom note taker. Some types of assistive technology can be very expensive and high-end, as providing notes can be done by other students. Fifth on the board, developmental disability are defined as children aged three through nine with developmental delay in physical, cognitive, social, emotional, or adaptive development. The good news is that these children are often given early intervention services for their specific needs. These children are less developed mentally or less developed physically when comparing to children of the same age. Early intervention services include assistive technology and medical, nursing, and nutritional services. Nutritional services may recommend specific diets, and these children require a number of different supports and medical treatments. Continuing, we move on to other health impairments. This category of disability includes a range of conditions such as having limited strength, vitality, or alertness due to acute health problems. These students mostly have troubles due to their ADHD, which leads to a lack of concentration. The ADHD students will daze off in class. Be sure to teach the students strengths. Try to put them in a position to succeed. Our next category is emotionally disturbed slash emotional disturbance. These students may be bipolar, depressed, anxious, and have psychological problems as well. These children are ill-tempered and anger easily. Some are very withdrawn and antisocial. Teachers should have the behavior intervention plans 
in place for each student. These kids are some of the most difficult to teach. You must be prepared to have a plan of action. The upcoming category on the board, speech language impairment. These students are defined as having a communication disorder such as stuttering, impaired articulation, and language or voice impairment. These students have trouble communicating, doing class presentations, and participating. Students with speech language impairment are identified at a very early age, and research has shown the great improvement from early intervention. Teachers should communicate and work with the speech language pathologist on a regular basis. Build a relationship with speech teachers that revolve around providing the best education for the student. Next on the whiteboard, traumatic brain injury. This is defined as an acquired injury to the brain caused by external physical force resulting in total or partial functional disability. These students often have memory difficulties and concentration problems due to brain injury. Even with research, we don't really know exactly how traumatic brain injury will affect cognitive processes. Modify the work, provide the students with extra time, use clear worksheets, and scaffold. These students are going to need accommodations such as extra time. Try to avoid clutter on quizzes and worksheets. Next up, stay with me here, orthopedic impairment. This disability is defined as a severe impairment of the bones or muscles that adversely affects a child's educational performance. These students suffer severe burns, deformations, bone abnormalities, and distortions. The disability can be caused by bone tuberculosis. Some students even have muscle abnormalities and distortions. Teachers must carefully arrange the room so that students have clear paths. Try and seat these students in front of the room. Allow them to leave early, and they may need comfortable seating. Now we're gonna move on to visual impairment. The disability is defined as an impairment in vision, even with correction, glasses, etc., that adversely affects a child's educational performance. These students have difficulties reading, utilizing technology, and have a range of eye conditions. Even if these students have glasses, they still have visual deficits, identifying letters and differentiating them. For example, assistive technology is usually necessary. Large print books work great. Nowadays, these large print books are very easy to find. Moving on. Multiple disabilities. It is defined as simultaneous impairments such as intellectual disability and blindness occurring at the same time. Provide modifications and accommodations. Utilize assistive technology and monitor behavior. Are going to need specific modifications and accommodations. Unfortunately, these students often need care throughout their entire life. Some have difficulties breathing, reading, seeing, etc. Many of these students receive their education at a hospital or residential school setting. Second to last, hearing impairment. This is an impairment in hearing, whether permanent or fluctuating, and is not included under the definition of deafness. Students have trouble with vocabulary, grammar, listening to lectures, and participating in classroom discussions. It may appear these kids aren't paying attention, but in fact, they haven't heard what was said. Reading and language arts are generally very difficult for them. Use voice articulation, sign language, note takers, and assistive technology. When lecturing in class, be very animated and speak with your hands. You should consider hand signaling as a quick formative assessment. And last on the board, autism. A developmental disability significantly affecting verbal and nonverbal communication and social interaction generally evident before age three. Teaching autistic students can be difficult because of a wide range of characteristics they possess. These students have unusual fixations and want structured routine and communicate in their own unique ways. Autism is sometimes called autism spectrum disorder. For example, Asperger's is one of the high functioning categories. Be sure to give clear instructions one step at a time and use various cues. 
these students need very clear directions, routines, and procedures when teaching. Now, if you would like more resources, please click on the link below to my Teachers Pay Teachers store, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.